Reporting on major events, the people who leave a lasting impression or inspire change, as well as holding the powerful accountable, is something that ABC 10 News has been doing now for more than 70 years. It's a long-term commitment to our community through compassionate, in-depth stories that affect San Diego. You're going to hear this a lot over the coming days and weeks from ABC 10 News. We follow through. It's not just a slogan. It's who we've been. It's who we are. And as my colleague Kimberly Hunt explains, it's who we will always be. ABC 10 News is committed every day to following through with stories that bring you along on the journey. We brought you to Cesar Chavez Park in Barrio Logan, where three little girls and their mother were living in a tent. ABC 10 News anchor Aaron Dickens first met this family from Nicaragua nearly two weeks ago. Today, Aaron follows through with them after a viewer from Santee saw Aaron's story and gave them hope in the form of school supplies. An example of how shining a light can many times bring positive change. I appreciate everything you guys have done for us. We follow through to highlight lasting effects, progress, and the pace of solutions. I'm Jim Avila in North Park, back at the squatter home we told you about for about a month now. We follow through to hold the powerful accountable when needed change doesn't happen. Does it bother you that you're squatting in somebody else's property? Yeah. When you come here, you get do you sleep on the floor? Yeah. I've been in my house for 24 years, and I think I don't know that we're going to make it to 25. When major events affect our neighborhoods, we not only show up during the devastation, we follow through to check back on how our neighbors are doing. Such a story is the historic January floods that destroyed homes and lives. The family of Spring Valley flood survivors we've been following since the beginning has started to move back into their home. And we check back again and again because we're invested in our community. We need to prioritize where the rollout is. We followed through with the massive amounts of money and manpower it would take to help residents get back into a livable home. And the volunteers who banded together to clean up and send out the alarm. There's a pond underneath there. It looks like a swamp. And what's growing underneath this subfloor is green mold and years have turned into decades that we have headed south of the border to track the sewage and chemicals flowing north into San Diego's South Bay from the Tijuana River. In one of dozens of stories on which I have followed through, in 2017, I was joined by Mark Angelo, a renowned international river conservationist who has studied the world's most polluted rivers. Angelo and I had to be taken by the U.S. Border Patrol into this area of San Diego along the Tijuana River. It's deemed a no-go zone. I took our lab results of the water to the executive officer of the San Diego Water Board. This is more than so. Test results from the water in the Tijuana River are here. They show arsenic, cadmium, chromium, copper, lead, nickel, silver, zinc. It's a serious concern. Those are indicators of industrial wastes, and they simply have no place in a natural river. As we follow the water back toward the U.S., there are areas in Tijuana where the smell of raw sewage is thick in the air. The river is filthy. During every rainstorm, this is what flows into San Diego's South Bay. In the field, in-depth, compassionate reporting. We continue to follow through with stories when others have moved on. We follow through because we care.